If you are tracking on downwind to a point that's 8,000, but then they give you a clearance that they say, one step prep one, that's our call sign here, right? Trainer one, descend and maintain 3,000 feet. Well look, prep happens to be at 3,000 feet. And I'm coming up a beam prep. The fact that they are descending me to this altitude basically tells me that at any moment they are trying to squeeze me in this direction. And I can further validate that by simply looking at my TCAS display and understanding the traffic picture that I have surrounding me. If I find that there really is no traffic out over here or here, or maybe there is, but they're significantly a ways out and they can squeeze me in front of that particular aircraft, now I am painting that mental picture that, look, traffic in the distance, they've cleared me down to an altitude for a point that's on the final approach segment, which means I can expect a base turn. The problem now though, however, is that I'm at 8,000 feet. How do I get this airplane down? Speed is your friend in this particular case. And let me explain. What you're gonna wanna do, if you look at the profile view right here, in order for us to get from 8,000 feet down to an altitude of 3,000 feet, I'm going to want to keep speed at 250 knots indicated airspeed. One thing you've got to know is that you can't slow down and go down at the same time. And look, you already know that, otherwise you would have no interest in buying this course because this course is to provide solutions to try to accommodate the traffic environment whereby sometimes we need to go down and slow down, but we can't. And these are the techniques we're offering you here as to how we can accommodate these things, right? So look, from 8,000 down to 3,000, I keep 250 knots, which allows for a steeper angle of descent, which means that the total distance covered, right, total ground distance covered will be a smaller number. Now, I'm going to need some tools in order to expedite this descent in the form of speed brakes, spoilers, right? I need these boards, as we call them in the jet world. And basically, with these speed brakes, it will allow me to maintain 250, have a nice steep rate of descent down to 3,000, and I'm going to do it at a higher rate of descent than I otherwise would have without these boards. Once I get down to 3,000, I'm going to level off. And now this level off segment, you're going to want to keep the boards out in order to expedite the slowing down of the airplane. And by the way, I know that this base leg is coming. So I'm going to slow the airplane down right away immediately upon reaching 3000 feet. Let me say that again. Initially, we kept speed 250 knots indicated. As soon as I leveled at 3000, I rolled the speed back to the magic number, which you've already learned. 180 knots indicated. I roll it back to 180. I keep the spoilers out, the boards, right? Keep that speed brake deployed. And now what we're doing is utilizing this level segment to slow the airplane down. Boards are going to expedite the process. And the reason I'm slowing down is because I'm expecting that base turn to come if it hasn't already come. Let's talk about that base turn, right? Now that we've turned base, okay, let's say they brought you down to the altitude, right? So let's say you're over here at 3000 feet. Okay, you happen to need to be at this point here at 3,000 feet. So we're right there, we're right on it, yep. And maybe now they turn your base and they start bringing you in this direction, right? You're tracking in. When do we start slowing down to 180 knots? Well, let me first give you this rule of thumb. On an A320 aircraft, on your navigation display, you have a cross-track reference, a cross-track error, so to speak, which tells you how much distance you are laterally from the extended center line assuming you program the extended center line. Now, what you want to know is this, that turn to final, you know when they tell you trainer one, turn left heading 030, maintain 3000 till established, you're cleared for the ILS approach, runway 36 left. When they give you this final vector, right, it should happen at a lateral distance that is no less than 10% of your ground speed. Let me give you an example, right? Let's say over here your ground speed, okay, is 200 knots. 200 knots of ground speed. What's 10% of 200? 2.0, right? 20. So now 2.0 nautical miles, okay, 2.0 nautical miles cross track error is when the final vector should come. If you are looking at the cross-track error 
and you are seeing that ATC is not giving you a final vector, it's a good thing to begin slowing down right away. Because what could happen is if we come barreling through this direction at 200 knots and you're not slowing down, you may overshoot the localizer. Now look, maybe it's the controller's intention to have you overshoot the localizer and that's, they had that in their mind from the get-go. But if they did, they would tell you about it. They would tell you the plan is to take you through the localizer and bring you back on to the localizer. If they don't tell you that, suspect that you should be getting a turn fairly shortly and begin slowing down in preparation for the final turn.